I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the money thing. Now the Bible, just to say, the Bible talks about the circumcision of our heart in the new birth as we're born again. The Bible says the Holy Spirit cuts out that love for sin. And usually a Christian will sin and they, they grieve over it. They don't really, they, it bothers them. They don't embrace it. And that's fine. You just turn back to Christ and repent from it and go on. But the point is, you know, you, you, you have to learn from that. You can't keep going back to it. You know, you, you, there's forgiveness for everything, but trust is different. You're going to heaven. You, God loves you. And, you know, you're stumbling around. And God, he loves you. There's no condemnation in Christ. But he does not put you in an assignment yet until you've mastered that thing or the enemy's going to be waiting over here for you. You follow me? I pastor this church. It's not my first day out. I've stumbled and tripped over all kinds of stuff. That's all right. No one knew my name when that was happening, right? My wife did. Family did, you know. But I'm trying to say there's a process where you're going to learn responsibility. You're going to learn what God says. You're going to follow instructions. And then you earn promotion. You're qualified to move on to the next level. And God gives you greater responsibility. All right. Here's a major key to your life. What assignment can God trust you with? And listen, we all make mistakes. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you have your part to play and God has his part to play and we have to learn responsibility and hold to that. Now, Paul was teaching Timothy, who's a pastor. Paul appointed Timothy as a pastor and was telling him how to pick leaders. This goes for, if you have a business, this, this would apply to anyone, really. He said this in verse 4 of 1 Timothy chapter 3, he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him and he must do so in a manner worthy of respect. So if a child, go clean your room, hey honey, go clean your room, and the child stomps off and slams the door, they are cleaning the room, but there's no respect. See, you don't train a child's performance, you train their heart. All right? If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he'll not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. So the key is be faithful where you're at. Be diligent where you're at. Do what you say. Follow the instructions of God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 says, You were once in darkness, but now you're in light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. See, expose them. Meaning that they disgust you. They offend you. Expose them. Don't play with them. But find out what pleases the Lord. See, we have to learn how how to please the Lord. What, what his instructions are. I mean, obviously you come to Christ, you don't know anything. But, you know, I had to learn Drenda's voice. I had to learn her. I, I need to learn how to please her. Not you. Not any other woman in the world. One person, one woman right there, Drenda. And so, like that with God, you have to learn what would please him. So, I had to, it doesn't matter what I like. What does she like, right? I need to learn her As a person, what does she like? And I was, you know, I probably really messed that up in the beginning. (laughs) You know, I remember our first month of marriage, uh, we were driving in Tulsa, we lived in Tulsa, driving down the the four-lane road there in Tulsa. And, you know, I'm a country boy. I grew up in the country. I hunt and fish and, you know, all those things. And so we're driving in the road, and this squirrel runs out in front of the car in front of us. It runs under the car not the tires, but it bumped the muffler under the car and just flipped over. Just, just nicked its head. And just, I said, Drenda, this is awesome. I pull off the side of the, I just pull over. I run out of the car. I grab this squirrel by the tail and I toss it in the back seat. 
I say, Drenda, I'm going to cook you the best squirrel dinner you've ever had in your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a lot to learn, right? Yeah, I really did. I look back on that and say, really, I really did that? You know, that is really, really, really bad. <laughs> I think she was in shock. I think she was. She's, you know, when I first met her, when I first brought her to Ohio, I remember we were driving along and there's cows along the fence. She's, wow, I've never been that close to a cow before. That's really. I went fishing, caught some bluegills. She cried and I cleaned them. I said, you're not going to hurt that fish, are you? Yeah, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> See, I threw this squirrel in the back seat of the car, you know, it's like. <laughs> there is a God. I'm still married. There's a God. <laughs> so I cooked this meal for her, you know, and I can still see her face as I brought that squirrel casserole out to her. You know, I was so proud of myself thinking that I was thinking, she's thinking, this is awesome. I'm married to this guy. I'll never have to worry about being star starving ever. He can take care of me no matter where we're at. You know, it's like he's a, he provide, he provide for me wherever we're at. And I can still see her face. She's kind of staring at this thing. She didn't do anything, you know, no interest in eating it. She's just staring at it. And she said, I, there's a hair right there. I said, so it's, it's been in the oven for, you know, an hour or two. It's sterile. It's all right. It's just, it's, it's okay. Now she did take a couple bites of squirrel. And in case you're wondering, squirrel is really very good. It really is good. But what would happen if I fed her a squirrel every night? Oh, I don't want these squirrel. That's too bad. I'm making a squirrel again. Because you know what? I like it. Well, I don't like squirrel. I really don't like to pick the hairs out. I don't really like the squirrel. I'd really, you know, I'd really, it doesn't matter, Dren. This is what I like. Um, what would happen to my marriage if that happened? It wouldn't go well, would it? <laughs> no. So I need to learn how to please her, and you need to learn how to, what, what is God, what pleases God? You just found out what pleases God. Do what he says. Have his heart. That's what pleases God. He wants you to do it the right way. Li raise your family the right way. Live your life the right way. Be concerned how you live your life. Is God pleased with this? Would, would Jesus want to go to that R-rated movie with me? Hey, Jesus, great, great movie. Oh, there's one bad spot in it. You can close your eyes. Come on, let's go to this movie. It's really a great. Do you think you take Jesus to an R-rated movie where you're watching couples have adultery on the screen, no one's married? Do you think you would do that? you think Jesus would want to go with you to that? But yet you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you are taking him to that. You see. So what I'm saying is, if you want to please God, you're going to have to evaluate what you're doing. Is this, is this pleasing to God or not? I want to please God. My heart is to please God. My heart is to find out what pleases him. And so I want to know what pleases him so I can reject what doesn't, so I can be offended at what he calls offensive, and I can embrace what he says is righteousness because he cares for me, he loves me, he wants the best for me, and I know whatever he says is for my best. And I want to find out what it says, right? So that's what we need to do. We basically just need to decide, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And how do we do that? We're going to find out what he says. <laughs> we're going to find out, how, how do I live this thing? You know, how do I live life? God, show me in your book. I mean, tell, teach me what's right. You know, help me make decisions. Help me learn what you embrace. I think that'd help us. So again, what'd you learn today? That we have responsibility. We have responsibility to find out what pleases God. We have responsibility to follow his instructions. We have a choice. We don't have to. But if we don't follow his instructions, we're going to stay where we're at until we learn then we can move on once we learn. I assume you'd prefer to be promoted and have the benefits of that and the good things and God, what he wants to get to you. And so if you do, we got to pass the test. We got to, and there's no condemnation. So let me say this in, in closing. You know, like I said, if you ate 25,000 Twinkies a day and you repented from that, God would heal your body. Or, you know, if you're on your fifth divorce and you were abusive and God will heal, heal the marriage you're in. I mean, he, from today forward, there's no condemnation. You can move forward in God, and he'll help you where you're at, fix where you're at, so you can be accomplishing what he says for your life. There's no condemnation. But what I want to see as your pastor, I want to see you embrace, embrace his heart. 
I want to see you love what he loves and hate what he hates. Because the world has embraced a bunch of stuff they call good, and the Bible says it's perverse. And I want you to embrace what is right so you can have everything God has for you, and it's amazing. The life he has for you is amazing, and I don't want you to be harmed. I don't want you, the enemy to take you down a trail of disgust and discouragement and dysfunction. I want you to learn up front what God says. Amen? Amen. 